This is Ahmed Yaimi Gamarin Shabbos Daf. Chof Ahmed Aleph. This will be the Ahmed for Sunday. For Purim Bisiyat Dishmaya. We'll post this before Shabbos so those could enter into Purim Kimu Vikeblu with appropriate Hachanois in the world of Torah as well. So we're holding on the very bottom. The last narrow line in Yitesa Amid Aleph. Vishavin. And they agree, Sh'elu ve'elu shetayin. And Bishami Bishil agree that you let to put olives, grapes, underneath the press on Friday, even though it's going to ooze and seep out. On Shabbos. Says the Gemara, Ma'ishna klu digazu v'vishamai. What's the reason that in the beginning of the Mishnah, Beishami made a gzair on everything. Shvi says, Caleb, he was worried about having anything work in the Shabbos. My Shnah Karz Beis Abad Vigulei Agas. Deloi Gazru. And why in this case did he not make a gzair up? The obvious question, what is the difference between this case and the first cases in the Mishnah? Answers the Gemara. Hanach Diyavad Lubi Shabbos Bechayv Chatz. The difference is, is in the beginning of the Mishnah, all those cases, if you were to do the action on Shabbos, it's a Dara'i. So, therefore, on Friday. Whereas, if you did it on Shabbos, it would not be a Dara'isa. Therefore, it would only be a Dara'abana. Therefore, Lo'i Gazu, there's no Gzira. So now, says the Gemara, knowing that we just said there is this chalik between the rice and the rabbanan in the latter part of the Mishnah. Mantano is the Tano Chomidi Dasim Emele Shabir Dami. Who is the Tano that says that liquids that ooze on their own are not a Daraisa on Shabbos? Who is the Tano that said that liquids that come out from these olives, from these grapes, that it's only going to be a Daraisa? Garlic, unripe grapes or grains that were riskan, that were pressed while it is still day, chopped up. You're allowed to finish the process even on Shabbos. Since you started on Erev Shabbos, you could finish them and allow them to ooze on their own into Shabbos. Whereas Rabbi Akiva Oimer says, Rabbi Akiva, as we turn over to Yotesa Mebeis, Loi, the Gemar, you cannot do it. Continues the Gemara. I apologize that the word on the screen said, Chaf Amar Aleph, it's really Yotesa Mebeis, that should be fixed now. Says the Gemara, Revelazer, Revelazer, he's Rav Eliez, Revelazer says, no, you know the town of Ramesh is Revelazer. Someone has honeycombs that were riskan, they were broken up, they were crushed in Erev Shabbos. Then also, Rav Lazar Matzah, Rav Lazar allows that honey that oozes on its own to be in on Shabbos. Says the Gemara, Rav Yosi, Rav Chlina, my temple, I'm a Rav Lazar. So Rav Yosi, Rav Yosi, Rav Chlina, top, bottom of Ahmed Aleph, said it's Rav Yishma. Ask the Gemara, why doesn't he say it's Rav Lazar? could explain In the case of honey, it's not necessarily the same. Because honey went from the status, the stage of honey, of food, excuse me, into food. So maybe that's why Rav Lazar held its mutter. Whereas Hachan, our Mishnah, Meikara Eichel, went from a grape and olive, Hashdom Ashkin, out to liquid. So maybe Tanat Rav Lazar would hold that that's a problem. So that's why we said it's like Rabbi Yishmael. Rav Lazar, Rav Lazar would explain, no. Hashamino later, Rav Lazar, Davilu, Zaytim, Anav, and Amishari. We know Rav Lazar holds the same thing is not only in Ani, but even in grapes and olives. Oh, Yasser, Rav Yishmael, and Ardaik, Rav Yishmael, and Ardaik, Rav Yishmael, and Ardaik, Rav Yishmael, He brought a Mishnah that said, Zaytim, and Amishari, 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 why didn't Rav Lazar like Rav Ezra Chanina? Amr Lachar Rav Lazar is going to answer. Lavitamar Allah, as we now learned 
Amar Rav Barchanin, Amar Rav Yechanan. Rav Barchanin is said in the name of Rav Yechanan, B'mukhusar in a dicha, when they lack the dicha, when they lack pounding, the kuli amalei pligi. Then no one argues. However, keep believing b'chusar and sichika, but they still need to be mashed a little bit. V'achanem k'v'zchar and dicha dami, and these items, the olives and the grapes, need more crushing. That's why you will not agree that they're mutter on Shabbos. Hayu riz v'achanem k'v'rav yishmal and riz v'achanem paskin like a yishmal. That's why he explained the Mishnah like him. Says the Gemara. Let's go a little bit similar. We're talking about olives. We're talking about grapes. We're talking about items that once the pressing starts before Shabbos, you're continuing into Shabbos. Says the Gemara Shaman. Let's deal a little bit with olive shell bardon of the olive presses. Bardon, excuse me. And the mats of the olive presses were almost smack in the middle of the Amid. The first line is Machatzalis. Rav Aser Ushmol Shari. Now we're going to the world of Muksa. Are these items, the items utilized in the process of making the oil, are they Muksa? Says Rav, yes. Says Shmuel, no. Explains the Gemara, honey, ke karki de zuzi. The mats used to cover the ship's cargo. Rav Aser Shmol Shari. Amar Rav Nachman. Again, so that case is flipping. In the first, excuse me, the same din. In both cases, Shmuel's holy, they're not Muksa. Amar Rav Nachman. Ezla Chalava, a goat that's for its milk, Varacha Ligizasa, a sheep for its wool, Vitarnagulis the Beitzatsa. A chicken for its eggs, a vituri deridia plow oxen, tamri de iska dates for business, rav also shmula mutter. So we have three cases that Rav is saying we have an issue of muksa. The olive press, we have an issue of muksa. The item covering over the boat and these items used that are set aside for a particular purpose. And all these cases, Shmuel is holding its mutter. Says the Gemara, what's this mach like us? This is a machlaikas between Rav Yehuda and Rav Shimon. Rav Yehuda is the one that holds that Muksa goes much further, whereas Rav Shimon is a little bit more narrow in the way he looks at the world of Muksa. If we look at Rashi over here, Rashi says, Rav Shimon less lay Muksa. Rav Shimon doesn't hold the Muksa. When we learn the rules of Muksa, we'll understand the Rav Shimon is not as broad in his applications of Muksa. And we continue and conclude actually with a story. How Talmida, there was a Talmud, a Dari Becharta, the Argis Krav Shimon. There was a Talmud who paskined in the Charti, the Argis, like Rav Shimon, who said it's not Muksa. We have an item over here. This was a person, Charti, the Argis, of the person. And it says, Nah, Muksa, Shamti Rav Amnur, Amnur, put him into Chayrim. Says the Gemara, Why is he in Chayrim? What Rav Shimon Sphere lay? But Asr de Rav Ave, who's in a place of Rav, Lay Baylon Mevet Achi, in a place of Rav, you're not allowed to pass in like Shimon. So therefore, says the Gemara, it's true that Rav Shimon doesn't know these items are Muksa, but Rav does, and in his place, you have to defer to him. Another story, Hani Trey Talmidim, two Talmidim, Chan Matzel, Bechan Mana, one saved food. One saved only food and drink in one container. And one saved four or five containers. It was a house that was burning and they wanted to save the food. One saved one and one saved four or five. Would come if we looked at the Rabbi Zav, the Rav Huna, this is not like us, and Rabbi Zana and Rav Huna. And Rashi just says, a very cold kiss, right? Rashi says, it tells exactly what the Machlekes is. The Machlekes is how liberal we are when it comes to allowing special leniencies to save things from a fire. Mir Tashem, we will get there. Before we call it a day, let's just elaborate for one moment that when it comes to Muksa, the Machlekes of Yudah Rav Shimon is not whether there's Muksa at all. When Rashi said Rav Shimon holds Leslie Muksa, that just meant that Rav Shimon holds, we don't take Muksa as far <coughs> as Rav Shimon holds. And the basic idea over here is these are items when they're designated for a particular usage, so they're not have a Shabbos usage, they're more Iskatsai for a specific usage. That's where Rav Yudah holds there are Muksa, Rav Shimon holds not. Siyat Shemayah will pick it up in the Mishnah on the bottom of the Testament base in the next year in Mirza Hashem.